Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you all are doing well. Today we're going to talk about row and column databases. At first, we're going to look at the features of both of them. Then we're going to talk about why you want to pick one over the other. Finally, we're going to go over and end to an example where we take into account a database table and talk about how a row database and a column database would lay out the same data in disk differently. We're also going to take a look at some of the example databases for both row and column. Okay, so we're going to start with row databases. For row databases, they, uh, the database stores all the data related to one row together in both disk and memory. What that means is if you see this table over here, you have three rows, right? You have row with an ID of one, two, and three. So in a row database, all the columns you see related to the same row is going to be stored together in disk. So let's say row one, every, all the columns you see, so name, age, and gender, is going to be in the same place in disk and memory. Similarly, for row two, all the columns related to row two is going to be together. And also for row three, all of them are going to be together. What this lets you do is get all the data related to one row very quickly because all of them are very close together in disk and memory. So if you have an ID or any anywhere clause and you want to get all the data for that one row, in a row database you can get it very quickly. Okay. Uh, so yeah, it is optimized for reading and writing individual rows efficiently. We talked about why it's optimized for reading one row at a time. That's because all the data related to, do, related to that one row is together. Similarly, if you're writing individual rows, it's much more uh, efficient to do that in a row database. Because as I mentioned before, when you're writing a row, of course, a row can have multiple columns and all those data in all the different columns are going to be together in disk. So when you're writing one row into the database, your database does not have to do too much work. It can just go to one location in disk and store all the columns there. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's so good for OLTP operations. Uh, we already talked about that. OLTP operations are usually randomly reading rows of data. So like full rows of data or just writing rows of data into the database. And given all the data related to one row is together, the row databases are usually very, very performant when it comes to that. And this is a traditional way of storing data. Uh, if you look at the examples, we have MySQL and Postgres, which have been there for a very long time. And when we think about data, usually that's what we think about, that we have a table with a bunch of rows, each row has related data, and all these related data is going to be together in disk and memory. So row databases are pretty much what you think of when you think of like a traditional database for a very traditional use case. Now let's move on to column databases. So for column databases, they store all the data related to a column together in disk and memory. So the difference between the two is in row databases, you have all the columns within the same row together in disk. And in a column database, you have all the data related to a column together in disk. So to give you an example, so remember in a row database, you had each row together in disk. So row with an ID one, name Bob, age 21, and gender M. All of this is going to be together in disk. But in a column database, you will have all the IDs together in disk. Then you're going to have all the names together in disk, all the age, and then all the gender. Okay. So for a given row, let's say for a row with an ID of one, in, a, in, an, in an extreme case, you can have the piece of data that ID equals one in one place in, the, in one part of the disk. You can have name equals Bob in another part of the disk. You can have age equals 21 in yet another part of the disk and gender equals M in another part of the disk. So if you want to do a select query where you want to read the whole row with an ID of one, unlike a row database, you cannot just go to one place and get all the columns. You have to go to multiple different parts of the disk 
and then put the data together. So of course this can be time consuming because in a row database you know where your data is related to ID equals one. You can just go there, get the whole row and give it back to the user. Okay, so it might sound a bit unintuitive because uh, usually you want all the data related to a row together, but here it's weird because you're kind of like partitioning by column, but it gives you different benefits that we're going to talk about now. Okay, so column databases are optimized for reading and computing columns efficiently. What does that mean? So let's say if you have a query that operates on columns rather than rows. So operating on column would be, let's say in this table, you wanna find the minimum age or the average age. In this case, you don't care about all the other columns, right? You care about the age column. And if you wanna do an average, a min, a max, or any of those computation, you don't care about any other column, you just care about the age column. Now, how is it helping in this case? It's helping because in a column database, all the data related to age, so in this case, 21, 25, and 32, they are gonna be close together in disk. So when you wanna operate on columns individually like this, it's very nice to have all the data together in disk so you don't have to like swap multiple disks between memory and uh, IO. You can just go get one block where all your age data is, bring it to memory, do the computation and give your user the data. But in a row database, doing a min on age or an average on age would have been more time consuming because you, you would have had all the different age data all over the database, right? So all over the disk, you could have 21. So 21 you see over here, you could have this in like, let's say disk block A, you can have 25 and let's say disk block B, and then 32 in disk block C. So now when you wanna do an average, you have to bring all three blocks into memory and then do the computation. Whereas in a column database, all of 21, 25, and 32 can be in the same part of the disk. So you just go to that one block, bring the whole block to memory, do the computation, and give your user the result. So you can see that if you're computing or doing any operations on individual columns, it's much faster to do it in a column database as opposed to a row database. Okay. So uh, yeah, the next one I have is it's good for OLAP operations. OLAP operations are usually like data analytics operations, which tend to be a, usually it is like large. Um, let's see, how can I explain it? So usually OLAP, for OLTP operations, they are usually straightforward. You like scan a bunch of rows, get all the data related to those rows, or you just write rows quickly. But for OLAP operations, the queries tend to be more complex and it takes longer time. That's because you do things like sum, average, or you do a bunch of different aggregation functions. So most of these usually compute uh, so, so for most of these, you're usually doing computations on individual columns. So of course, column databases tend to be better at that than row databases. The next one's related, which is uh, column databases are used for data analytics where column aggregations is very common. So by column aggregation, I mean, you wanna find the minimum age, the average age, and then uh, maybe Maybe if you have a table where you have all the sales data, you want to be able to group them by month and then do an average to see what's the average revenue coming from every month. So things like that, as opposed to a very simple select query to get one row of data or insert one row of data. Um, okay, so in column databases, writing rows of data can be slow. And I hope it already makes sense why. That's because, let's look at an example, like let, let's look at the row with ID three. If you were to write this row in a row database, you would know where to put the row with an ID of three. You would go there in disk and write out all four columns exactly there. So you go to the, uh, you do a disk seek to go to the part of the disk. 
and then you write three mic 32m and you're done okay but for a column database if you're writing the same data you would need to go to one part of the disk write the id equals three you have to go to another part of the disk write down name equals mic you go to another part write down age equals 32 and then yet another part you do gender equals m so you can see that even though you're writing one row of data you're essentially going to four different places to write the data related to the four different columns whereas in a row database you would go to one place write your whole row and you're done because of that writing individual rows in a column database tend to be very slow so usually you don't do that usually you do a batch write where you chunk uh, where you like chunkify all the all the rows that you have to write and then write them in chunks okay some examples of column databases are redshift bigquery and snowflake these are very common for any analytical applications and usually even in like a typical application you have your OLTP database where which you use for your day-to-day -day operations and then you have an OLAP uh, you have an OLAP database that you use for any kind of analytics all right so let's look at an end-to-end -end example this is going to be similar to what we already talked about but hopefully the pictures are going to help you understand it better so let's say we have a table of data it's some students or employees whatever you can think of you have three rows id one two three and then you have bob alice and mike with age 21 25 and 32 and gender male female and then male okay so if you were to store this data in a row database we're going to think of an extreme case of course it's not going to be like this in practice but thinking about the extreme case will do uh will help you understand the the design or structure better okay so let's let's think you're storing this data in a row database in that case let's say you have three disk blocks so you have the green block over here you have the blue block and you have the red block in any kind of database going to different parts of the disk is a very expensive operation because you have to physically move the pointer to go read data from a different block so ideally what you want is when you're reading data or writing data all the data related to that should be in one chunk otherwise it tends uh, sorry one block otherwise it tends to be slow so in a row database as we talked about all the data related to a row is together in disk that means if you have three disk blocks your first row is going to be in one block all of them together your second row is going to be in another block and your third row is going to be in another block what's important to note is for a given row all the all the columns is together so if you look at the first row you have one bob 21 m at the together in the same block for row two you have alice you have two alice 25 and female in the same block and same thing for mike so what this lets you do is when you are trying to read all the columns of a given row you can do it very quickly right so if you want to read all the data for the row with id equals one you can just go to this one block and get the data similarly for id2 and id3 okay so yeah all data related to each row are together in disk and memory and it's very quick to retrieve all the data so all the columns related to one row now let's see how you can uh, put the same data in a column database right so for a recap this is how our data looks like now if you are storing in a column database once again this is an extreme example but this will do a better job kind of showing you the difference so if you recall in a column database you have all the data related to a column together what that means is let's say you have all your ids one two three in one part of the disk you have all your names so bob alice and mike so you have Bob, Alice, and Mike in another part of the disk. And then you have all your age data, 21, 25, and 32, in this uh, another part of the disk, right? So this is an extreme example, but hopefully this shows you that now, for the exact same data, they are totally different in disk. Now, if you want to 
if you want to read all the columns for row with ID equals one, you have to go to the first disk block, get the ID, the next disk block, get the name, the next disk block, get the age, and then you'll have another, which is going to give you the gender. You can see how inefficient that is because in a row database, you were just going to one block reading everything at once, but in a column database, to get all the columns for one row, you're needing to go to three or four different blocks, which is of course much more expensive. Similarly, when you're writing a row, so let's say you're writing the row with an ID three, right? In a row database, you can just easily write it. You go to a disk block and then write your whole row and you are done. But in a column database, you'd have to go to one place, write the ID, go to another place, write the name, and go to yet another place to write the age. It's significantly slower than how you were doing the whole thing in a row database. Now, talking about where the column data, database gives you an advantage over the row database, let's say you wanna do some computations on individual columns like a min, max, average count. What you can, let's say you wanna do the max age, right? In a row database, you would have to go to all the different disk blocks, bring the row to memory, go to the H column, and then do your max operation. Whereas in a column database, you already know which block all your H data is. You don't care about all the other fields. So you go to that disk block, bring it to memory, compute very efficiently on that one column only, and you're done. Similarly, if you wanted to wanted to do an average, max, min, whatever you do. It's significantly easier, both in terms of uh, how quick it is to do it in a column database, but also in terms of memory consumption, because you are only going to be bringing this one disk from, uh, sorry, this one block from disk to memory, whereas in a row database, you are going to bring all the blocks to do the same computation. Okay, so hopefully that kind of gives you an idea of how the two uh, sets of databases lay out the data differently in disk, even though you might have the exact same data that you're storing in two databases. The good, good side about that is it lets you use two separate databases for different distinct functionalities. So usually you can have a OLTP database, which is gonna be a row database, like a MySQL or a Postgres. And then you'll have a column database, which is going to be your OLAP database for any kind of analytics on the same data. Okay, so I am going to link this whole uh, notes that I went through uh, as a PDF in the description below. So if you don't want to rewatch the video and just want to go through the notes, please go ahead and download that. Apart from that, uh, you can also take a look at the resource I have over here. This is super helpful and it goes into much more details than I did in the video. So if you're still unsure about a few things, I would highly encourage you to go check out the article that I linked here. So with that being said, hopefully this was helpful. And yeah, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And yeah, I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.